Welcome to another edition of Lincoln to Local. I'm joined again by Oklahoma Farm Bureau's Vice President of Public Policy and Media Relations, John Collison. And John, as we're ending the month of May here coming up, we're hitting the home stretch on session. Dustin, we are in the home stretch. We're hopefully down to the last week. Um, I think that session may end uh, next week. Um, boy, it's, uh, it's kind of a mess at the moment. Um, one of the biggest issues this week that's kind of raised their head is, is this uh, increase on gross production tax on, on oil and gas. Um, it's kind of the topic of the day out of the Capitol. You've seen, uh, you've seen some uh, heavyweights weigh in um, from Tulsa, from Oklahoma City, some big oil execs. Uh, but it's the issue at the Capitol. We issued a press release this, way, this, this week uh, weighing in on it also. Um, it's an important issue for us at the Farm Bureau. It's something that does affect our members, and it's something that we have policy on that is very crystal clear on where we are being against raising gross production taxes on our members. Now, looking at the gross production tax, why would farmers and ranchers worry about that? It seems to some people, I'm sure, it would just affect oil companies. Sure, and it does mainly affect oil companies, but a lot of our farmers and ranchers live on a lot of property. And not only do they own the surface, they own the, what's underneath it, the mineral rights, too. Um, you know, this, this gross production tax, being at where it is today, has really allowed Oklahoma to benefit. Um, you know, towns like Weatherford, Woodward, McAllister even, uh, Clinton, Weatherford. I mean, they've really, because Oklahoma City, uh, the way this tax is, our members have made it clear. They stated it's disastrous to raise taxes on, on gross production tax. Um, while they think we think they're going to probably raise it maybe 1%, uh, up to, from 1% to 2 probably on both horizontal and vertical, it, it's something that our members uh, are affected by. They pay that gross production tax on their property, and it affects the companies that live and work out in western Oklahoma and jobs. So we have a vested interest. Our people have spoke strongly on this. It's something that we weighed in um, at the Capitol, and I think we'll see a compromise maybe this week on it. Also, we had our Farm Bureau leaders, a few of them from around they the did. state, as we get ready to gear up for the primary elections. Yep. Uh, talk about our Oklahoma Ag Fund. Yep. Boy, I tell you what, when this session ends, it's full campaign, full time. Um, our members came in from around the country. Our, our, all of our counties were represented yesterday uh, at the Ag Fund board meeting. We sat down for a couple hours and went over these races. Uh, Farm Bureau's voice is strong. Farm Bureau's endorsements are important. Uh, they decided what races we're going to play in uh, in the primary in June, probably through August and all the way through November. So we look forward to getting out there in the country here pretty quick and working on those races and getting people elected that work on rural issues and Farm Bureau issues for us in the future at the Capitol. And what are the important dates for people to remember as we get close to the elections? Yeah, June 25th is the, uh, June 24th, excuse me, June 24th, is that Tuesday? That'll be the primary. A lot of these races are going to be decided in June 24th. People need to get out there and they need to start paying attention. We're just a few weeks out. If they have any questions, they can call us here at Public Policy and we'd be happy to talk to them about some of these races, but our members are always engaged and know what's going on. Um, um, they will make the right decision when the time comes. Thank you, John. And thank you for joining us for another edition of Lincoln to Local.